welcome to the spotlight. And I am Mess Lombard. I'm your host, Darius D. Nice Chapman. And we live, baby. We live. Welcome to the show. Today we hear the spotlight, no pun intended, on talent in the Chicago land area. We got three special guests today that's up and coming in that genre of the entertainment business. Our first guest, he's a movie critic. And he's here to convince me that the Batman movie is worth a watch. And I know what y'all thinking, chill out. It came out months ago, but guess what? I'm not convinced that Twilight is a good Batman. I'm a huge fan of him. And if he doesn't deliver this the correct way, I'm putting him off the show. Our second guest is an up and coming sports analyst from the prime time with Shawnee B on the Sports Town Chicago Network. Um, we're gonna discuss the upcoming NFL draft that's happening tonight at 8 p.m. And we're going to talk about how the Bears, well, what are what they going to do? Are they going to move up in a draft? Debo Samuels is still available. Hint, hint, wink, wink. And then we're going to talk about the devastating Bulls exit from the NBA playoffs. And last but not least, our third guest is a stand-up comedian. He is a funny guy. I knew him for a couple months, and I feel like he's hilarious. His take on comedy is what's up so without any ado let me start the show hold on, hold on. Uh, let me get it cracking should i use my batman voice no i'm just playing our first guest is javi lazada he is the movie buff and we're here to discuss the new batman movie how you doing today Javi? i'm doing good i'm glad to be on here Thanks, th thanks for coming. Before we get this started, we're going to play the trailer for you guys. A snippet. Tell you one thing, Catwoman boy. Woo. <laughs> Ain't just Lemmy Kravitz's daughter. Uh yeah, that's Zoe Kravitz. That's Catwoman. I think she honestly in this movie, I think she's one of the best Catwomen. We don't see too much of her, I'll tell you right now. But I feel I feel like out of all the Catwomen, like she's she's got a lot of potential. I, I hope to see her in the other movies. Come on, Holly Berry. You know that movie wasn't good. <laughs> that movie was, it was entertaining. It was entertaining. Okay, I'll give you that and I'll that's fine, but comic book wise and just like story wise, I come on, really watch it, really watch that movie. It, and everybody, everybody will tell you that that movie is not good. I'm That's like one of the hated uh, cat women. Because people are haters. I'm gonna watch it with it, my best friend. It's Lynn. true. So, um, tell me how to uh, tell me about the movie. Convince me. I'm here. All right. So, one of the things, one of the main points I think about the movie that makes it separates it from the Christian Bale ones especially. It's, if you like Batman, which I, I can see you do, oh, you know, yeah. um, I, if you really like Batman and you really like the comic books, you read the comic books, this is comic book Batman. And that's what all the other um, Marvel or DC fans will tell you. This movie really hit it with the detective work. And that's what people love about Batman because he's the world's greatest detective. So mm -hmm. they want to see him solving crimes and cracking riddles and stuff like that so that what having the riddler be his like enemy in this one was a really good move i i think really because the world's greatest detective is always in small cap because we looking for batman to come out the shadows and break your squiggly pooch for oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh don't 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 get me wrong he does it in this movie i mean it's still cool batman the, the action sequence sequences excuse me are great um, you know, it's it's not. I feel like as flashy maybe as Christian Bale's was, but he he's definitely beaten up, and it's a lot more savage if, in my opinion. I think I feel like 
it's more raw when he when you see Batman whooping him, he's you can almost feel it yourself. Really? <laughs> yeah. Cause when speaking of the Christian Bale movie, when Batman when um Bane broke Batman back, I felt that. Oh, everybody felt that. Everybody <laughs> felt that in the comic books. I felt that. I mean, it, that was that was really cool. I mean, it, it was done a little differently, and obviously the style they chose for Bane was different. I still think it was a great Bane. It showed that because Bane. What people don't know in the comic books is Bane is also very smart. Right. He's not only just super strong, he's very smart. Right. So, you know, um, people just expect him to be, oh, and then when he gets the Venom pumped through. And I think that was another thing. They didn't have Venom right. in the movie. So people were kind of upset about that. But um, I think he was one of the, I mean, compared to the other Bane, the other Bane was that, I don't know if you've seen the uh, old movie. It was like Batman Forever or yeah, something like that. Yeah, he comes out, he's all yeah. green and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was bad. Um. <laughs> Is who is the best Batman to you? Um, live action. We ain't not the cartoons, not the comics. I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Christian Bale. I do. I do like this new Robert Pattinson. He's promising, but I haven't seen enough of him. And honestly, the other ones, Val Kilmer. Um, who uh, who else was it? it was Val Kilmer? Oh, I forgot uh, the guy. The, the other, the other <laughs> Batman. They they. Adam West. I like them. Oh, Adam West will always be my favorite. <laughs> But, I mean, I only know really, you know, the Christian Bale one. So I couldn't, I couldn't take Adam West seriously because, you know, um, being a fan, you see where it comes from, so you go back and look at it, and like I couldn't like, pow, kapow. Right. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on, Javi. Um, we'll come back after this commercial break, guys. This is the hand that sows the seed that grows the forest, that drinks from the stream, that hugs the mountain, that gives shape to the wind, that carries the kite, that is flown by the child, that is loved by the woman, that toils at the job, that gives to earth share, that supports the hand, that sows the seed. All life is woven together. How can we choose which environmental cause to support? EarthShare, the workplace giving program, makes it simple by bringing the leading environmental groups together under one umbrella. Support EarthShare and you support them all, including the hands that sow the seeds and protect the forests and the streams and the children. To learn more, please visit our website. Welcome back to the spotlight. As you can see, we get to talk about sports, baby. Bear down all day. Let's go. And our next host, our next guest, my bad, is Shawnee B. He's an up and coming sports analyst from the Primetime and Shawnee B show on Sports Town Chicago every Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. Um, thank you for coming on, Shawnee. Dude, it's a pleasure to be here, D. Nice. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on, man. So um, we're going to jump right into it because the NFL draft tonight. Are you excited? Oh, man, I am excited. And a little sad, too, just because the Bears don't have a first-round pick. So, But that's the thing about the first round of the NFL draft. It's always crazy. Like, last year, I don't believe the Bears was, like, 28. Um, no, they was, like, 26 pick. And then they moved all the way up to 11 to get Justin Fields. And they made that last-minute decision. The One of the very few th uh, things that Ryan Pace did good. Right. But, yeah, man, that was a great move getting Justin Fields. But tonight, man... Or even tomorrow, I want to see what we can get for position-wise. Like, I want to get somebody on the offensive line, or I want to get somebody or a wide receiver. Um, tell me about um, some of the draft picks you um, got in mind. Oh, I got you. I got you. So, a couple of players I got in mind. We got Luke Giadecki, offensive tackle from Central Michigan. I got another uh, offensive tackle from Central Michigan, Bernard Raymond. Okay. Um, then we got another offensive tackle but from Minnesota, Daniel Failia, Lie, however you pronounce it. Hopefully, I get it right. Another guy that everybody's really is really good on is um, George Pickens, wide receiver from Georgia. Okay. And the reason why everybody's so high on him is because when we got rid of Allen Robinson, I mean, now we don't have a number one wide receiver. Now we have, I mean, we have Darnell Mooney. He's good. Don't get me wrong, right. but he's a number two. Right. We need to give Justin Fields that real dominant number one target. Right. Uh, I like um, Darnell Mooney too. He's a deep threat, and with um, his um, arm, 
he um he's very effective. Um, uh, I'm sorry, but um, you hit the hammer on the nail with um some of those topics because I got mostly all offensive linemen. I got um uh, Evan Neal from Alabama. Okay. In his um 2021, um, I think he was a junior. His junior year, he only gave up 12 sacks. Dude, let me let me pause you right there because anybody that we if you whenever you draft a player from Alabama, I always love that just because they one they always pan out. Two, Saban really knows how to coach those guys. Yeah. And so when they go to the NFL, that they're prepared. Um, it's far like maybe the running backs and borderline quarterbacks, but the linemen usually always stick. So that's Very why true. I um got him. And my second choice will be Charles Cross from Michigan State. He has great footwork. He's very fast for his size, and he has excellent awareness. Oh, I got more, baby. Oh, man, you did some studying. I yes, love I it. did. Yes, I did. I was <laughs> up all morning. And um, <laughs> number three, I think we should get Ar- uh, Armand Gardner. He's a cornerback from the Bearcats. He had oh. 28 solo tackles. Three interceptions um, his last college year, um, and that's tied for 36. And we also should get Kyle – well, try to get Kyle Hamilton. He a safety from Notre Dame. He had 19 solo tackles, and he also had three intersection, interceptions. And he had total from his three years in college, he had 97 combined tackles. Dude, That's I- as a safety. I like the safe. I like that you're thinking about safeties because last season we really struggled with this, with in the uh, defensive backfield. It's really kind of funny because Eddie Jackson was going off and uh, right before the right before the first game of the season, telling people, "Oh, how to tackle," and I'm pretty good at tackling. That man couldn't make a tackle all year. <laughs> so I mean, we got to do something. Please don't watch. Be watching this Bears because they gonna stop us from coming on the shows yeah, just, and everything. Yeah, do yourselves a favor. Don't even tune in. If you are gonna tune in, just be ready to be miserable. <laughs> All right, for my fifth selection, I think we should get Tyler Linderbaum from Iowa. Okay. Um, he's six three two ninety, and his entire career. Listen to this. This is right. very impressive. He only committed two penalties. His entire college career, two really? penalties. Yes. That's very impressive. He only allowed his entire uh, college career two sacks. Man, that's some discipline right there. Wait till he gets to the NFL, man. That's, exactly. That's, man, yeah, those stats might flip flop. Nah, if he gets on the Bears though. I'm telling you, he might. He could be a leader. Yeah, and he did, and he only had 19 pressures. Guess, guess out of how many um, snaps? Um, 2,317. <laughs> uh, if he's still available in the second round. I think we should definitely get him as center. And he only plays center, so he's great at that position. I definitely believe we should get him. Dude, I agree with that. Not only we should get the offensive lineman from the draft, we made some good moves in the offseason, too. We signed Lucas Patrick from the, from the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. And I love, how, I love the way that polls is thinking because they recently just asked him, it was either yesterday or, or two days ago, that – they asked him about a rebuild, and he completely denied the rebuild. Like he doesn't want to come. He doesn't want to say that the Bears are in a rebuild because mm-hmm. he thinks that they're fine, but we, they just need to fix up a fix up a few things. But come on, it, it's a half a rebuild. But I still love what Poles is thinking. Um, I love the way he's going in and he's attacking. I mean, he helped out with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. So I mean, he knows what he's doing. My uh, big. Oh, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Um, uh, I'm um I'm halfway there with you because um he gave away a lot of our good players. Um, like you said, um Allen, he gave away Khalil Mack. Um, yep. what's his um uh, Eddie Goldman, I believe. Eddie Goldman's gone. Um, Tariq Cohen's gone. Yeah. So he gave away uh, a lot of people. So I'm guessing he's not saying it's a rebuild because he's trying to build around Justin Field, but it it looks like a rebuild. And it's oh. going to be hard to get, like, veteran um, players to come here. Like, the ones still in their prime, not the one past their prime. Exactly. And one. And speaking of veteran, not even – yeah, speaking of veterans with talent, you know who uh, who's on the market right now who I would love to come to Chicago, but I don't think it's going to happen? Who? Debo Samuel. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, uh, oh, I spoke about that earlier and because um, he's unhappy in um, it's unhappy. San Francisco. Yeah. Did you see that video where um, – <laughs> he was in the club. Yeah, someone had up a sign that was like Debo stay, and, and he's looking at the girl. Yeah. At, at the girls, he's like, nah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Debo, 
please, we need you. Debo. If you're looking at this. Dude, get a Super Bowl in five years, Debo. Just come to Chicago. Help us out for a bit. So what you think about the Bulls? Like, I'm I'm happy. Everybody, I, I've been on Twitter all morning, and I see a lot of disappointment in – the um the Rosen um signing and I believe he was the best player on the team the whole season. Oh, facts. I mean, he was yeah he he was in he was supposed to be an MVP. He was doing great. I mean, last night he had a bad game with about eleven points, two rebounds, and seven assists. But you know what? Overall, I am proud of the Bulls. They made it this far, exactly. and it's nothing but up. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I appreciate you very much for coming on the show, Shawnee. And I love being again, on here. Tune in to Primetime with Shawnee B on Sports Town on Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. This is Sports Talk. When Raymond was 10, I couldn't let him play ball in the schoolyard because of the gang. When he was 15, I wouldn't let him go to any dances because there could be a fight or a shooting. Now he's a man, and I realize he's never been a kid. Give your children back their childhood. Do something now. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Together, we will take a bite out of crime. I don't know. I'm missing something there. This is New Guinea. It's so powerful. I don't see it. I'm having an out-of-decade experience. <laughs> I was walking and came upon a fountain which bore the sign, Don't Drink the Water. Do you and get this? Carries a sign it saying, fantastic? What does this poem mean to me? It's like a collage of images Let's and face sounds. it, not every cultural activity appeals to everyone. Finding an oasis. So we're giving you something everyone likes. A choice. That's why 23,000 arts and humanities groups are inviting you to find something you can get excited about. Just call for a free brochure about what's going on in your community. I think I'm getting into this. They're tuning up. The arts and humanities. There is something in it for you. There's a lot going on in your community. For a free brochure on how to get involved, call our toll-free number. Welcome back to the Spotlight, guys. And our third and final guest today is the stand-up comedian I would tell you about. He don't want me to call him this, but I think it's a cool name and it should stick. Vincent Vito. <laughs> How's it going? Thank you for coming on, man. I know you, uh, you a busy man. Hey, thanks for having me. No problem. So here. we're here to talk about comedy. And I know your style of comedy mm -hmm. is a little different. So why don't you tell us a little about it? Well, uh, nothing that hasn't been done before, but I like to, uh, I like to stick to one-liners, kind of short jokes. I always find those a, a easier way to uh, get people to laugh more. Uh, yeah. Shorter jokes means more laughs. So that's my that's my uh It's different, style. but if you good at it, them little bang, bang, yeah, bang, exactly. bang, those little, those hits. Yeah, the laughs per minute goes up a lot with those type of that Right, type of right. Style. So um tell me who inspired you to do stand up. Um, quite a few people. Um like I said with those one liners, um a lot of people have given me that style. So like Anthony Jesselnick, similar uh with the one liner style or like a Bo Burnham, very uh one-liner oriented so those kind of guys definitely got me into it but then so many classic comedians like Dave Chappelle and uh, uh, you know Andrew Schultz Louis CK you know all the all the top guys you know they all inspire me so I, I hear you talk about um Mr. Dave Chappelle over mm -hmm. there um so the goat right exactly so the we goat. made um a little list guys so tell me um your top stand-up comedians well, I got, I got, like I just said, Dave Chappelle, far and away the go, in my opinion. Hard to, uh, Facts. hard to argue against that. Facts. Um, I got Anthony Jeselnik at number two. Um, one of the top comedians, like I said, he's very similar, one-liner type of guy, so he inspires me a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, I have him at two. This is kind of more personal preference rather than uh, like who I think is the greatest. Right. Um, then I got Bo Burnham, very musical. Mm -hmm. uh, he has m musical comedy, f funny songs, and it's very creative. So right. I'm a fan of uh, innovation. And uh, and Andrew Schultz and Louis C.K. Uh, pretty classic comedians. You know, nothing too different about what they do, but they just do it very well. Right. No, that's a very impressive list. On my list, my list is not in order. I'm just I was pinning it down, and I had to think about my top five stand-up comedians and. One of them is Eddie Murphy. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys remember Eddie Murphy, 
but he classic. was impressive. Classic. Especially in those leather outfits he had on, and he was sweating bullets that Jerry Curl was mm-hmm. wet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jerry Curl was oh, wet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, Dave Chappelle. Gotta be. Like, um, I don't, to be honest, I don't think I started watching stand up until Dave Chappelle. Yeah, no, he's a lot of people's introduction into stand up. Yeah, and that made me go were, back. Yeah, a lot of people were fans of the Chappelle show and kind of right. saw him transition into comedy and stand up. Right, right, because I wasn't old enough for Raw, but it made me go back and look at some of the yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, Martin Lawrence. Great. He, right, he's hilarious, and I appreciate how he talk about himself, like mm-hmm. with the big ears, yeah. and he still made it funny. Yeah, self-deprecating humor. He's very good at it. He's, uh, yeah, classic. Right, yeah. I can't even pronounce that word. Uh, this is, uh, I love this guy because he's hilarious. Um, Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. Larry. And like That's I recently, guy. like I was today's year old when I found out his country accent was fake. Really? Yes. I always, I never seen him out of character. No, I hadn't. I haven't either. That's ooh. right. That's dope, right there, yeah, dude. I didn't know that. And last but not least, people talk about like they say he's not funny, but Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart, yeah. Oh right. yeah. He's anyone who says that guy's not funny just. Right. He doesn't have a sense of humor. I his delivery, oh, like his presence, great. his energy on I mean, stage. And there's a, it's not an accident that he's the most famous comedian of all time. Exactly. Like, uh, and, he's uh, not the best of all time, not number one, but he is. You know, you don't get that level of success with right, right. being I good at what you do. strongly agree. Yeah. And I was watching Kevin Hart before Kevin Hart was Kevin Hart. Mm-hmm. Like in those older movies. Oh, yeah. Like man, um, yeah, he had, he wasn't uh, he was no overnight success. He was right, a, right, a long long process. For exactly him. Yeah. right. Okay, now I want to talk about because I love comedy movies. Mm-hmm. So, what are some of your favorite comedians in movies? Well, um, I think the it's hard to argue against Will Ferrell probably being one of the funniest guys, the goat on the planet. Yeah, he's he's. The go as far as comedy movies, I would say. I would and you was telling you. me most of his stuff is like improv, right? Yeah, yeah. He's known for, uh, they, they call him the take killer because his goal when he gets on set is to just uh, make everyone laugh and ruin the take. Cause, uh, I and, would love to meet and him. And that's why a lot of, oh, it would be great to meet him. A lot of the people who work with him and stuff, they say uh, um, it's almost impossible to work with the guy. Craig Robinson talked about how one of their f- iconic scenes, um, it took him over 300 times to film it. <laughs> Because they just couldn't stop laughing at the guy. I love Craig too. Yeah, he's hilarious. Uh, anybody else on your list? Uh, yeah, I mean, I got a lot. I got because Will Ferrell on mine. Yeah, I got uh, Eddie Murphy's on there. On uh, Bill Burr is a yeah. guy I'm a big fan of, and uh, yeah, Jerry Seinfeld is also on there. Hard to hard to love. make a top ten list without uh, without him. Highest earning comedian of all time. And speaking of Eddie, Eddie Murphy, he's been hilarious since the eighties. Oh yeah. He took a little. He took a long break from stand up. Keeps saying he might come back, but uh, I don't know. Oh, cause I heard Netflix signed him to like a major movie deal. Really? So right uh, after that, coming to America too. Yeah. I think they want him to make like a couple of more movies. So I think he's going to be busy for the yeah. next couple of years. Yeah, I'd love. Uh, whether it's in a couple of years, whether it's soon, I just hope uh, we get some more stand up stuff from him soon. He's he's too great to to walk away from the game that early. Right. Oh, that's crazy. He on my list too. Yeah. Uh, anybody else on you? Oh, um, Seinfeld is uh, is a guy. Yeah, that um, show, that show was hilarious. Yeah, oh, great. Seinfeld, even, uh, what it was is hilarious. It like the, uh, I think it was one of the longest running shows on uh, mm-hmm. television. It's uh, it was yeah, hilarious. Yeah, he's uh, he's all time great. Hard to make a top ten. Without. It took me to get older because it used to come on when I was younger, but I was like ready for the yeah. Simpsons to come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here so yeah, yeah. Um, a- I got Jonah Hill on my list. Jonah Hill, yeah, he's uh, he's a great. I've I've found it funny. He started off as a comedic actor. I, I'm impressed with the way he's transitioned to be more. Yeah, me to, too. To kind of go into more serious roles. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I saw him in War Dogs. Have you seen that? Movie? Yes, great that movie. movie. It was great. It was great. His yes. performance was fantastic. Yes. He was. Uh, he kind of used that. I think he wanted to show people like I can do. I can do this too. I don't. Wolf have to of Wall be Street. The funny guy. Yeah, that was a great the, performance. Great. He's one of the best actors in the world. I would right. Say. Yeah. Um. Who else I got? Seth Rogen. Yeah, he's hilarious. Great writer too. Yes, he yeah. got his foot in almost anything, and like that when that movie Sasha's Party came out. Oh, that I'm was... so happy I didn't bring my kids to yeah, that movie. Yeah. Funny I'm story. So I actually brought a girl on a date to that movie, not knowing that that was the movie. <laughs> All right, didn't end up well. Thanks a lot, Vinny, for coming on the show. I really appreciate your take on comedy, and we'll be back after this commercial break on the spotlight. The air dances with the waters, which brings the rain that feeds the land. 
that is home to the animals. All life dances together. In a world so connected, choosing one environmental cause can be hard. Earthshare is 40 environmental charities working together. You and your company can help by calling 1-800-MY-SHARE. All life lives or doesn't together. Janine woke up in a cold sweat with one thing echoing through her brain. Who was this guy in her bathroom? Meanwhile, Barry was thinking, whose bathroom am I in? Janine remembered going to the party the night before and getting smashed out of her mind. Barry remembered getting drunk and acting really stupid. Eventually. The whole evening came back. Oh, I must be really stupid. I must be really dumb. What did I do? How did I get myself into this? Well, what did I do? How did I get myself into this? What about... What about... What about AIDS? Then they both realized, much to their relief, that unlike the rest of us... They were just cartoons. Get high. Get stupid. Get AIDS. Welcome back to the spotlight. And we have all three of our hosts on here saying goodbye to you. So... We're going to go in order that you guys came on the show. Do you guys like the Batman? I thought it was a very good movie. Shawnee? I wouldn't really know. I'm um, not really a Batman guy. Hate oh, to disappoint. I think it's time for you to exit quick. <laughs> well, I'll be, uh, I'll be joining him because I have also not seen the movie. All right. Don't put the cameras back on him, guys. <laughs> um, sports. How you guys like the um? What you guys think about the Bears? What they're gonna do tonight? I'm uh, I'm hoping they do good. I'm always rooting for Chicago teams. Is the draft tonight? Yeah, eight p.m. Yeah, I uh, hopefully our GM can look a little more competent than our last uh, last guys up. He did good with the um Justin Fields pick definitely, though. Definitely did. I mean, even though we don't have a pick tonight, hopefully that we can organize and strategize what we could do. During the draft, during the draft, and hopefully we get an alignment or a wide receiver. What about um, comedy? You guys, anyone? Y'all like comedies? Y'all got I some like favorite comedy. comics? Yeah, I love comedies. Um, I, I heard you guys talking about Jonah Hill. Actually, I'm very a very funny. big Jonah Hill fan. Hilarious. Yeah, His yeah. range. Very good. Very, very rangy. Yeah, one of my favorites of all time is Robin Williams. Oh, Great. rest in peace, rest yes, in peace, rest Robin in Williams. Peace. Yeah. 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 My um. <laughs> Favorite Jonah Hill movie because I was just watching clips. Um, Twenty Two Jump Street. Great movie. Oh yeah. With the um, <laughs> with the classic. Ice Cube part, we can't probably say it on air, no. but oh, the um, Ice Cube's a legend. <laughs> when they went to dinner and he found out that um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was... uh, thanks guys for coming on the show. Tune in next time on the Spotlight. I'm your host Darius D. Nice Chapman. See you later. <laughs>